right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Watt being on the field would probably make the Steelers like an eight-point underdog and make the game a lot more interesting to national audiences who, who kind of have written the Steelers off. But the reason they're a big dog is because Buffalo's got one of the two or three best quarterbacks in the league, and they've got a very good team right now. But I think they're going to have to get creative in the passing game if the wins are as bad as they're supposed to be, which seems like a given. Uh, Mason Rudolph's going to have to hit some little timing plays to Pickens. They're going to have to find a way to get Pickens involved. If it's snowy, I still think they probably have to make one or two plays in the pass game. The blueprint's got to be the way the Bengals really took it to the Bills a couple years ago, or it might even been last year, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, in the snow. Uh, They've got to take it to the other guys, you know, really win the line of scrimmage, and then find a way to hit a play or two downfield. You know, if the Bills play like they did last week, do you think the Steelers have a better chance? Well, yeah, because I, I... I mean, Josh Allen, have you, you ever watched The Simpsons, Richie? You ever see the, you know, Simpsons yeah, guy back I've in the day? I've seen parts of it. I was never really a big fan, but I've watched it. I know what it is, yeah. Fair, fair enough, but there's a very famous line that, that kind of gets thrown around all the time. Homer Simpsons is, ah, beer, the cause of and solution to all of the world's problems. When I think of the Bills, I think of Josh Allen, the cause of and solution to all of Buffalo's problems. Uh, if he turns the ball over a bunch... The Steelers, I think, have to do two things, uh, which is what he did against Miami. They have to not only capitalize, but I think they have to try to play keep away while they're capitalizing. Like, if he turns the ball over, he throws an interception. Say the Steelers, best case scenario, they get up 7 nothing. He comes down and tries to force one through the wind, and it gets picked off, Richie. I do think the Steelers have to try to be judicious and hold on to the ball and, like, and make those turnovers hurt, not just from a point perspective, but from a time of possession perspective. Because the longer he's out on the field and the more possessions he gets, even though he's prone to throwing interceptions, the more likely it is that he does something spectacular that brings Buffalo right back in the game. And having Minka Fitzpatrick for, back for this game is huge when you're talking about, about a guy like uh, Josh Allen who you know, can make stuff happen and, and can keep you into coverage and, 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 and make plays happen with his arm and his leg. Yeah, I mean, I think that you've, you've got to hope, too. A lot of his turnovers, a lot of his interceptions specifically, come when he just tries to play hero ball and just makes a terrible decision. You would hope Mike Tomlin has something cooked up defensively that's going to maybe bait Josh Allen into some of these bad plays. We've seen Tomlin go in there in good conditions weather-wise and have his defense, albeit with Watt, stifle uh, Josh Allen. So it, it can be done. Uh, But I would caution people. I know the Steelers, people have talked about there's an edge over there I saw. They're playing with an edge. There's a nastiness. There's a a true belief. That's all well and good, but I would strongly warn against people getting overconfident, again, when the team is by a considerable margin the biggest underdog of Wild Card Weekend. Yeah, you know what, Chris? The Steelers have won ugly all year, and I'm not saying they're going to win this game. Uh, But that's the only way they can win this game, I think, if it's an ugly type of win. All right, we're going to take your phone calls coming up next. 412-575-2600 is the number. Back in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. This is our GMC Tweet of the Night, and this is from CBS. Uh, Most Super Bowl wins for head coach in NFL history. You see Bill Belichick up there with six, Chuck Noll four, Joe Gibbs three, Bill Walsh three. Um, You know, this is something that we expected. We heard um, people have been saying that they were going to part ways. It actually happened today. I don't think Bill Belichick's days of coaching are over, Chris. Um, You know, I've seen Adam Schefter tweeted something today. Atlanta might be an option. Uh, But there are, what, seven openings right now. Uh, I bet he lands a job here soon at some point. Well, the new scuttlebutt is that the job that he is likely ticketed for is one that is technically not currently open, i.e. probably a playoff team. I've heard rumblings that people think that Dallas might want him. I don't know how that would work because you know Belichick's going to want personnel control and Jerry Jones loves the draft and loves being the man who makes the, uh, the picks there. I'll say this on that front, uh, Richie. If he wants to catch Don Shula as fast as possible, he should do two things. Lobby very hard to get the Chargers job. Uh, and get some of that West Coast sunshine with Justin Herbert already in place. And then let the general manager do their job. You know, let them hire a GM and let that person actually pick the team. Uh, Because I think Bill Belichick, the player personnel man, has been arguably the biggest enemy of Bill Belichick, the coach, since Tom Brady left. Uh, They have whiffed on a very high number of high draft picks. 
Uh, they have not done well at roster building, and I think it finally it did finally catch up to him this year. He and pretty much every other coach that loves to have a ton of power in personnel, if not unilateral power, need to give that up. It's too complicated of a job to entrust that and coaching a team to one person. Yeah, very apparent the last few years without Tom Brady and some of the things that he did just had you scratching your head, uh, like an offensive coordinator with Patricia and, and, and guys like that. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. What, what, what's your gut tell you? Where is he a good fit? Like, where do you think he should go to have somewhat some success? I think it's the Chargers. I mean, if the Cowboys actually want him and somehow he and Jerry Jones would make that work out, then you've obviously got a ready-made team with a great defense there. And, and Dak, I think a guy who should get serious MVP consideration. But failing that, I think it has to be the Chargers. Uh, they have the best quarterback in terms of talent. And they are a team that has been sort of the, the diametric opposite of the Patriots. You know, we hear about New England at their best under Belichick. They would have a, a roster where – Maybe the talent wasn't top-notch, but they would get the absolute most out of it. The literal uh, polar opposite has been true for the Chargers. There have been years where they have been the most talented roster in the NFL, bar none, and done nothing with it and disappointed everybody come playoff time. So I really do think L.A. is probably the best fit for him if he wants to win big. These rumors that like he, he would go to Atlanta, I, I just don't see it. They've got a pretty decent roster, better than people think, but there's no quarterback if you don't have the quarterback, I mean, do you really trust Bill Belichick, who picked Mac Jones happily to find you one? I don't. I just, I really think he needs to go to a place where that position is already taken care of. He found Tom Brady, though, right? After he passed on him five times. <laughs> but he still found him. Let's go out to Dave in the north side. How you doing, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I want to talk about uh, the Steelers. They... Their defense is uh, the, the. I think Buffalo is going to go with the run game more, and they're they're going to go with the passing because I think Cook Cook is going to. If he takes over, he's going to do the same thing he did to Dallas. Well, yeah, I mean they've gotten better at the run. There's no question about it. I mean the Steelers are banged up on defense, but I, you know they're they're finding something, and, and I think that runs out at some point. Uh, you can't keep replacing, you know, players and in the middle and guys getting hurt and now T.J. Watt. Even though they had, this is their best depth at outside linebacker they've had in a long time. So from weeks 12 through 18, so the last, what, seven weeks of the regular season, the Steelers ran the ball more than any team in the NFL, 231 times. The Bills ran it the second most in the league, 220 times. So I don't think either coach here, guys who are former college roommates, of course, uh, and guys who know each other well, I don't think either coach, if the weather conditions are really terrible, is going to be shy uh, about trying to put the, ha the ball in the hands of their running backs in their offensive line and see where it, it lands them. Obviously, McDermott's going to be more confident in his passing game because of Allen's physical talent, but it could be one of those games that goes by very quickly if both teams stay committed early and often to running the football. And that's a place where, you know, you hope Landon Roberts is as healthy as he can possibly be because him being in the middle of that defense makes me feel a lot better about their ability to stop the run. Uh, them having Casey coming back, Minka coming back, I think is helpful with dealing in, in terms of Buffalo's tight ends in the passing game that they like to utilize, uh, Knox and Kincaid. But, yeah, I do think this is a game where you could see combined between the two teams, literally, I mean this, over 60 carries. Uh, I think that these teams could combine for 65 almost, almost 70. I think there's a real impetus to run the ball if the conditions are that bad. Yeah, I think the Steelers have the advantage, though, with Najee Harris. David, Finleyville, what's up, David? opinions on the two keys for the Steelers victory on Sunday. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> score more points, right? No, that's what everyone says. But you, I mean, obviously you have to run the ball. You got to keep the game close and you got to hope for me. Uh, I think for the Steelers to have a chance in this game, it has to be an ugly type win. Uh, you know, Josh Allen has to be forced to turn the ball over. That's, you know, a tougher task without TJ Watt back there. But, you know, the Steelers got to make a splash play, a big play. And I think the weather might favor the Steelers a little bit. I mean, I like the Steelers in the points. There's no question about it. I don't know if they could win this game, though. So I'll give three keys. One is ball security, ball security, ball security. If whether it's the wind, you the sound like a game, coach. Or if, well, it's true. I mean, Jalen Warren's an explosive player, and I feel like they might. If it's snowy, I think. Ball security, ball security, ball security. That's what. Uh, 
Chris Muller was just saying, I think he froze over there, but I, you know, I understand the point that he was trying to make. I mean, Najee Harris, the first time he got the ball and you saw it slip out of his hands, that is important up there. It's important on both sides. You don't want to be the team that turns the ball over and loses the game that way. So uh, there's no doubt about that, David, that I think ball security is a, is a big point in this game. Um, you know, and I do think that the team that wins the turnover battle in this one and maybe can score points off turnovers uh, is going to win this game. Uh, but I definitely think weather will help the Steelers, if any team, in this game. All right, let's go out to Chuck in Uniontown. How you doing, Chuck? Yeah, thanks, fellas. Once again, first of all, the, 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 the Mars brought a business, and then I have two things to ask about Steelers. One, about the Steelers. If you win the toss... Do you take the ball or do you, or do you defer? And the second thing is, is it of primary importance to have the wind at your back in the fourth quarter? Well, they're supposed to get a lot of wind up there. And uh, our meteorologist Ray Pedlin's telling me that potentially 60 mile an hour wind gusts at times. So that's going to be awfully hard to throw the ball. And so I, I would imagine you'd want the wind at your backs in the fourth quarter, right? Do you take the ball first? I mean, I think it's important for the Steelers to, to get going offensively. So, uh, but I like what the Steelers do sometimes, just putting their defense out there first. But you don't want to get down early in a game like this. So potentially, if I had the opportunity um, at, at first crack at scoring and setting the tone with the run game and, and trying to bully the other team, at least that's what the Steelers are trying to do up front right now, run the ball run the ball, run the ball in bad weather. I take the ball first, and I see if I can score. And then you have the Bills on, on their heels at that point. Um, so that would be me. Um, I, would, I, I, I don't know what Tomlin's going to do, but I, I think if I have a chance to get the ball first, if I'm the Steelers, I take it. All right, we're going to take a break right now. Back with more of your phone calls coming up next. Stay right there.